Amen. We are entering into deeper waters at this moment. Glory to the living God. This is a moment to take home. This is a moment to run with. This is a moment that our trust can keep you till we meet again at Man Up 2024. Praise the Lord. I believe God that a world to bring life is coming. I believe God that a resurrection ministration is here. Ah, glory to God. You know, I've been twice at Guttaslo to minister at God Movement. Praise the Lord. And I can tell you, God Movement is moving. Jesus is Lord. Amen. And I've seen the faithful, wonderful work of my dear friend. Praise the Lord. And my heart is excited to have him talk to my people. And today we have the opportunity to walk into deeper waters. I don't know what level your water is on your body, but I know for sure something of God is about to come upon you. I want to welcome, before I welcome the man of God, God's movement, senior deaconess, Mama Deaconess Victoria. Please, can we celebrate her in the house? Please celebrate her. Blessed be the name of the Lord. While you are standing, I would love to say something about her. Amen. There are many people at her age, they are saying they have retired. There are people who haven't reached mama's age and they have retired. There are people who when you even tell them God is calling them into ministry, they will say God should call the younger ones. But this is mama here. She's even of age more than most of our parents. But this is mama who follows my brother wherever he's going to minister. Hallelujah. You see, grace can be different. Are we together? Amen. I want you to welcome and celebrate Chief Deaconess Victoria. Please put your hands together for her. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When a man of God travels with a mama, an armor bearer of this age, he knows what he's getting. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Mama, we welcome you. We celebrate your presence. We pray for more grace to keep you going like Moses. In the name of Jesus. And at this moment, I welcome my brother. God's servant over God's movement. Hallelujah. Pastor GB. I welcome you. In the name of Jesus. I want you to open your hearts. Praise the Lord. I want you to open your heart. I have been there. And glory to God. I love the simplicity and the faith in this man of God. And today, something that I have seen, I have benefited from, will become your portion. Receive him with a shout. Hallelujah. Receive him with a shout. Glory to God. It's working. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Can somebody shout a better hallelujah? hallelujah? Can somebody shout one more time? Hallelujah. How many of you know that God is good? Praise the Lord. Where are my champions? Or oh, potential champions? 
because you see destiny is only a potential. It doesn't always happen. And that is why men are deceived. Kesera, Sarah, there's nothing like that. Not in the kingdom of God. Okay? Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So where are those potential champions in the house? Because I'm, I'm seeing, uh, I want to, you know, when this mic is doing this, I know something is about to happen. <laughs> Praise God. I'm seeing some beautiful coattails, some beautiful waistcoats. I started seeing it yesterday. I said, wow, this is good. Nothing like seeing beautiful people worship God and beautiful men and handsome men and beautiful women worship God. And young people worshiping God. There is nothing like it. D David was a youth when he did mighty things. When he began to do mighty things. You will do mighty things in Jesus' name. I'm excited to be here. And those champions are going to praise God. You're going to praise God like you never praised God in a moment. And I want to say thank you, man of God, for the honor and the privilege to stand on this altar today. I want to say special thanks to you. And to your wife, the woman of God. I watched you yesterday bringing that fire from heaven. That was powerful. I said, wow. I said to mama, mama, look at that. That's a woman of God. Pastor Peter told me she can pray. I said, yes. Some of you are looking for a woman who can just dress nice. No, you look for a woman who can pray. Because if you can pray, something can happen. Because God is not deaf. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, whatsoever you speak into the ears of God, so God will do. So if you have someone who can pray something can happen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, man of God, you are blessed. I celebrate both of you. I give God honor for both of you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Today you are in for something special. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. amen. How many of you believe that God is not done with you just here? Oh, glory. Hallelujah. You have come to see Jesus, not to see me. So today we're going to be glorifying Jesus. I, I really, I heard when I came in here that Pastor Ricky Obebo serves here. And I was, I was wowed. I was glad. I was excited at the same time because I was watching. I wanted to know who I'm ministering with. There's something about the spirit. The spirit bears witness with our spirit. That we're the sons. You don't just go everywhere. You, you know, the spirit of God connected me to the man of God. <laughs> Amen. So, and I love what he was saying yesterday. And I've watched and I've seen that he's someone who is an entrepreneur. Wow, that's good. We need people like that in the body of Christ. We need people who can finance the gospel. Hallelujah. God is taking Pastor Peter Cole to another level. And God is planting people like you into his life. And there are many of you who don't know just yet you're one of them. Because the word of God for you, man of God, is that you're expanding the frontiers of the kingdom of God. You are expanding the frontiers of the kingdom of God. God is going to use you to expand the frontiers. Things that have never been heard was possible from Germany. God is going to do it through you. Because the Lord has seen your heart that you're a willing vessel. And God is going to make it happen. If you believe that, I just want you to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, I heard you saying yesterday there are some as city, Mama said, uh, some as pastor, 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 Mrs. Sophie said, some are sitting, he said some are crawling. Today you are going to fly. They that know their God. Not everybody. Not everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Some people come into church. They're so excited. It's all in, so much just emotion. You got to come to the place. You got to burn. Some people are smoldering. But you got to burn. And when you burn, you begin to walk on water. That means you know your God. Hallelujah. You don't have a problem. The only problem you have is faith. You know, some of you have read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Everybody, if you've heard it so many years, been to church, or you don't still understand it. You get confused every time they say it. Faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things. What is going on here? Every time uh, they preach all kind of variations, seven steps to whatever. Faith is a life. You see, it's a profession. I believe God. God said it. I believe God. The just shall live. The just shall live by believing what God said. Every word that proceeds, like Jesus said, out of the mouth of God. So there is rhema, there is logos. What is written? And then rhema is like rice. What is God saying this very moment? 
Because if it's not Rima, you, 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 you make a mistake. You know, some pastors walk into the lion's den and say, I, I'm going to be like Daniel. The, the lion eats them. Why didn't it eat Daniel? Because Daniel had the word from God. Because there was a trouble. And God showed up. Some of you don't know that trouble comes to you walking on two legs. That is why when the man of God was in the spirit talking, yeah, I stood up. The spirit. Somebody say the spirit. You're bringing people into your home. You don't know what's walking in. But I announce to you today, your trouble will be troubled. And watch this, watch this. Your trouble is what will take you to the next level. One trouble can make meaning to your life. <laughs> if they knew, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good. There ain't going to be no promotion without trouble. Somebody shout! God is about to do something. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mama Victoria Deconez, I want to thank you for being here today. She's a great woman of God. Even if it's last minute, she shows up. Serving with time, energy, and money. Not just serving. I mean, serving with time. She can pray this through roof off. If I tell Mama, come up here. Sometimes I'll do it. Some of y'all men say, what is going on here? I, I thought I could pray. Mama can pray. Sometimes I got to bear her to stop. Mama can pray. That's what you need if you have somebody who can pray. Why, is, why was Charles Spurgeon successful in ministry when, when he's ministering that people praying beneath? Today, what he's saying is still alive. The things he said. So we need people who can pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you ready? I'm going to start in a sequence. There's what you call the law of sequence. Sometimes you got to do this so that something else like this can happen. You can do this and then something like this happens. God is a God of pattern. I'm about to preach. I don't want to get ahead of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. David understood that. I will come into his presence singing. Hallelujah. Because there is a protocol for the presence of God. Somebody, who is receiving there? Somebody is receiving there. I like that. I like that. I like a church that talks back to me. Praise God. Woo, praise the Lord. So those champions, are they here today? And somebody is listening and saying, he's talking about men. Oh, no, no, no. Before God, there is neither male nor female. So the same way, <laughs> I'm going to be a bride. I'm a man, but I'm going to be a bride of Jesus. I'm married to Christ. You're married to Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. The gender is just an establishment that God made to help each other. That is why if you look at the message translation, you know, we, I saw a lot of things going on and I'm excited. I'm praising God and everything in my heart. But I want you to know this. Paul put it this way, man came from, man is born of woman. And the woman came from man, but all is from the Lord. There is a symbiosis of unity right there. Meaning, anytime there is no agreement, it's not going to work. There has to be that understanding, submission to the Holy Spirit, both parties. Okay? And when both submit to the authority of God, the picture of Jesus comes into the home. Because Jesus loved the church. And give himself or her. So the man can give himself. So when we finish this, some of you will understand how you can give yourself. And then the women will also understand how they can be like Christ in their home. God is set to do something. So when I say, where are my champions? I want to see some people who can serve God like a houseboy. I saw this brother dancing. And I'm like, this is what God is looking for. You know, when if you look at the scriptures, the Bible says the Spirit of God came on. David, he would dance, but he would leap. Today we come into the body of Christ. I see so many so-called big men, not actually, actually big men. Because the Bible says the one who has behaved like he does not have. The people who don't have are the ones who are braggadocious. When you have money, you are careful to talk too much because somebody is going to challenge you. You pay a lot of money. So I want to see people who can serve God like a houseboy. Because if you can serve God like a houseboy, something is going to begin to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to start with my favorite song. Then we're going to worship a little bit. Amen. And I want to see something happening in your life right now if you can believe God. I said the only problem you have is faith. The only problem you have is faith. God is not the problem. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't look at the world out there. We are in the world. We are not of the world. They don't understand what we are doing. We are spiritual people. We are supernatural people. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I just said? You are living in Germany and you get confused with all the things they are saying. No, 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 no. You are standing on a solid rock. You are on a solid foundation. 
they are not standing on a solid foundation. They can make money. It can grow wings and fly away. Hey, I want to preach to someone. God will even take the wealth of the unrighteous and give it to the righteous. You know why that happens? Because you are on the solid rock. Others are on sinking ground. Somebody say, I'm on a solid rock. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you. No, no, no. You don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. Thanksgiving is the seed for more. So we're going to start with Thanksgiving. This is a supernatural moment. God deals with us in moments. I didn't come here because I want to entertain you. I came here to do the bidding of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You know, so many people may be listening, but there are those that are really receiving. And I'm looking for such a one. Hallelujah. I'm looking for such a one that today is going to be a turnaround of your destiny. I'm looking for such a one that is going to be that from in a hundred years time after you have passed on from here, there would have been a generational blessing. There would have been something you have given to your generation. The Bible says it is a good man that leaves an inheritance for his children. I want to see those singers again. I want to see those champions who are ready to praise God for two or three minutes. Hallelujah. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All oh, I have to say is thank you, Lord. Sing it like you mean it. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Sing it from your heart. What shall I say? From your heart, what shall I say unto the Lord? All we have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Jehovah reigns, He reigns, He reigns. Jehovah reigns, He reigns, He reigns. You are lifted up. Somebody 
shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, make some noise. If you are depressed, it goes today. Amen. There is something about shouting unto God. Yes. It's come past the enemy. Yes. Voice is the proof of life. Yes. David said, can I praise God in the grave? So voice is the proof of life. That is why when you give birth, when the baby is born, the first thing they do is to hear a voice. When there is a sound, somebody said, I will make some sound today. You know, the enemy wants to keep your voice down. But it ends. It ends today. They will hear your voice in the name of Jesus. Oh, come let us adore you. somebody pray in other tongues. I want to hear somebody worship him. Somebody call God by his beautiful names. Somebody exhort him. Listen, when you do this, something happens. Hallelujah. This is the highest form of prayer. Just bless his holy name. Worship the ancient of days. Mm. Somebody bless him. Glory in him. Hallelujah. Keep that coming. Keep that coming. Just bless his holy name. Pray in other tongues. Make some noise unto the Lord. Worship him. That speaks and it comes to pass. He that dwelleth in the light unto which no man can approach. The blessed and only protected God. The I am, that I am, that is the God that will be what he will be. No one can change it. Yes. Father, we thank you today. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor and glory. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you are worthy alone yes, Lord. to be praised. Amen. I pray, Father, you encapsulate me with a life fire from your altar. Yes. I shall speak the very words of God. Yes, Lord. I shall speak to say the Lord. Yes, Lord. I shall not speak the words of man. Yes, Father. Bring someone today to the bleeding side of Calvary. Amen. Heal someone. Yes, Lord. Save someone. Amen. Deliver someone. Amen. Father, we shall be careful to come back and say, thank you, Jesus. Someone shall be able to declare, I got just what I needed from God. So shall it be in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say a better amen. amen. If you love Jesus, can you put those hands together as you sit down? God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm going to move at the speed of light as is my custom because of time. Hallelujah. I'm going to move at the speed of light. So I want you to follow me quickly. I'm going to share a couple of things in the Bible. How many of you believe the Bible? I'm a preacher that believes everything God says. So I want you to follow me carefully. And as is my custom, I will try as much as I can to give you scriptures to validate the things I'm talking about. Because I'm not saying my own words. Hallelujah. 
David, Daniel said, when your word came to me, I received strength. So it's when you hear the word of God. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So faith is not from here, it's from another realm. But you need to hear the word of God consistently, continually for it to come. Hallelujah. And when faith comes, victory becomes possible. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm going to be saying them step by step. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world. What is that victory? Even our faith. Hallelujah. So God can watch. Where are the champions here? God can watch a man die if he has no faith. Are you following what I'm saying? All you need is what? Faith in God. And I'm going to give you, as the Holy Spirit helps me, even examples or testimonies, if the Lord permits. But I really want to teach for a few moments because I have limited time. And it will bless your life. Amen. Amen. Today we're using for a theme, sons of inheritance. Amen. Somebody say sons of inheritance. Amen. The overall theme for the Man Up 23 International Men's Conference is whose son is this? Whose son is this? I like that. Pastor Kole has a, you know, people just say because pastor, pastor, pastor is just an office. It's one of the five-fold ministry offices, but it's also a prophet. It's also an apostle. Hallelujah. Because I follow this ministry and he always brings a word. Hallelujah. So when, he, when you see a man of God give you a theme, then God must want to tell you something. I love it when I saw it. And you look through the scriptures, got me excited. Because the Bible has many themes. And one of those themes in the Bible is sonship. Somebody say sonship. Son. Hallelujah. So we're going to get into it a little bit. And every theme in the Bible applies for your victory, for your success, for your daily living. To make meaning for your life. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at sons of inheritance. And we're going to read from verse. Uh, we're going to start. There are words the Lord gave me. So I'll quickly just say them and then we'll get into the text. Number one, pastor, please, you, you're hearing me today. I've given you for, the, for you what the Lord said. And I'm giving to the body of Christ here from this altar. Fear not. Somebody say fear not. Just lay your bodies down. If you're a man, say I will lay my bodies down. A man's life is a thankless job. Some of you don't know that just yet. You can even buy your wife a Lexus tomorrow to see something better. And it looks like you never was, uh, you never bought anything before. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. you, sometimes you can send your children to the best schools and they still find something to say that is missing. That is why you got to be the priest he was talking about to teach them to, to see the blessing, count their blessings and name them one by one. So if you lay your bodies down, God takes over. Hallelujah. But for you to lay your bodies down, it begins by removing fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. So somebody say, I will lay my bodies down and let God take control. Psalms chapter 55 verse 2. When you get home, you read that. Psalms chapter 55 verse 2. Another word I got from the Lord the other day was no weapon. Somebody say no weapon. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Somebody say no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. That's Isaiah 54 verse 17. There is somebody that is hearing me right now. They may have planned something against you. It may even be an evil eye. Envy is an evil eye. It doesn't want you to get to the next stage of your blessing. I declare that eye turns blind. In the name of Jesus. You will continue to be a living testimony. Another word the Lord gave me for you is that uh, you have to go for the promise. Somebody said, I believe the promise. If you don't believe the promise, you can't get the promise. Abraham believed the promise. Isaac believed the promise. Jacob believed the promise. Jesus believed the promise. That is why he laid down his life. Even David believed the promise. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will see it when we get there. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. When you get home, you read that. Another thing the Lord gave me is this. Your fight is not their fight. Your fight is different. Some of you are trying to fight other, people, other people's fight. You are a child of the living God. You are in the kingdom of God. You don't fight like the unbeliever. The weapons of our warfare. Uh -huh. So your fight is not there. God has something that he has designed you to be. So your fight is different. Every destiny encounters a different fight. And the greater the destiny, the greater the fight. 
And sometimes even after God has given you the blessing, you still have to fight. The odds are already against you on this side of eternity because the enemy is one who is roaming around seeking whom he may what? Devour. But thanks be to God who gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47. 1 Samuel 17, 47. 2 Chronicles 20, 15. I know this is on tape, so you can come around and listen to that again. 2 Chronicles 20, 15. Exodus 14, 14. Exodus 14, 14. Sometimes pastor can even get it on tape and you sow a seed to just have it, not because he's selling it to you. It's just so that you can enrich yourself. Repetition creates influence. That is how faith comes. If I'm repeating it and repeating it, it can take a 10-year period. Then it sinks in, you get it. Hallelujah. So you got to go back and do what? Hear them again. Hear what pastor is preaching because here you are well fed. The word is here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another thing is that after God has opened the door, <laughs> something came to my spirit, then you got to also make opportunity for other people. That means you got to raise other people. There is no point a man becoming something dies and it ends there. Because then people will need to come to that grave to get an anointing. Elisha died and they threw a dead man in there and the boy came back alive. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, we raise men. I said, Father, you're already raising people. God is going to bring you into a season of open doors. The season of windows has passed. Malachi ended with windows. I will open the windows of heaven. Then the last book, Revelation, said what? I set before you an open door. And when there is an open door, it means there is access. Somebody get in there right now. That is the word of the Lord for you. Praise God. Whew, I like this. This is good. Let us look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. A uh, couple of verses there for our text today. There is a word of God that defines your destiny. And there is a scripture for everyone to fulfill. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to give you an outline at the end for better comprehension. So we're just going to read from verse 54 to 58 for context. And then we will go to Luke and find something there. I'm a preacher that likes to interpret everything I find in, the, in light of the New Testament. The Old and the New Testament, there's no difference. Don't let anybody confuse you. And then they begin to bring all kind of theological, you know, whatever, extremes. It's just the covenants. Praise God. Jesus gave us a better covenant. So everything you're hearing, sometimes you read in the Bible, they say the scriptures. When they say the scriptures, Paul was simply talking about the Old Testament because they are interpreting what God had already what spoken. Praise the Lord. So First Samuel chapter 17, I'm going to read quickly the King James Version of the Bible. It's not so much for clarity, but the Lord will help us to explain it. Amen. There are other versions of the Bible, but I'm using King James Version of the Bible. People use it more broadly. Amen. First Samuel chapter 15, I'm going to read the principal verse is verse 55. But I need some context. Verse 54 to 58. Amen. And it reads, And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. Mm. But he put his armor in his tent. Somebody say, when I win, I will take the spoils. Things have changed. Those days when kings go to war, soldiers go to war, they are allowed to take the spoils. The armor of Goliath was a spoil of war. That is something he, knew. he got from. He took it and kept it for himself. It's a souvenir. When your blessing overflows in the streets, it's yours. You don't need to explain to anybody. You don't have, oh, nobody, no apology. They were not there when you were sowing the tithe and giving the offering and praying for hours and fasting. They were not there. You sowed seed. You're taking what? The harvest. David had something here. He kept it and brought the head to the city of God. Pastor was talking about bread and what? Wine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, follow me. Verse 55 now. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? Abner said, as thy soul live it, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, inquire thou whose son the stripling is. It's 57. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Hmm. 58. And Saul said to him, whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy son. And Jesse, the Bethlehemite. There is a reason for this. Please, somebody underline Jesse in your Bible. I'm talking of sons of inheritance, right? I'm talking of sons of inheritance. If you don't know where you are coming from, you won't get there. 
There's a lot that has to do with your history. Where you're coming from matters. Hallelujah. And I'm going to explain that. Okay, so watch me. Let us look at Luke chapter 4 from verse 14 to 22. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 22. Pastor, am I still on time? Am I still on time? Are you, are you in a hurry to go home? I like to keep to protocol. Luke chapter 14 from verse 14 to 22. Luke chapter 14, verse 14 to 20. Luke chapter 4, not 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 22. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit mm, into Galilee. And there went out the fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Sometimes where you are being brought up. <laughs> those that are going to fight you are mostly those who know you. But he came to what? Nazareth. A man's enemies are those of his own what? Household. So follow carefully. And he came to what? Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as his custom was. He went into the synagogues on the, on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet, Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Somebody said, I will find the place where I am written. I'm talking of sons of inheritance. There is something God has already spoken about you. <laughs> you just need to find it. And when you find it, you're going to walk into your inheritance. The Bible says he found the place where it was what? Written. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Watch this. Verse 20. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. When God has said to you, there is no more struggle. Amen. When God has said to you, there is no more struggle. Amen. You just see that the blessing will be flowing. Amen. I didn't say it will be flowing away from you. It will be flowing towards you. Amen. Some people, the blessing is flowing away from them. And they are wondering what's happening. Today there will be a turnaround. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he sat down and the eyes of all of them were what? Fasting on him. You will be a living testimony. Amen. People will celebrate you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They are looking at you. Somebody is just saying, oh pastor, I'm about to quit. I have a word for you. The devil is a liar. They will come and celebrate that success. Amen. They will come and celebrate Jesus in you. Amen. Jesus in you is the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is what in the world. They fasting their eyes on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled. Pastor, you're in the spirit. In your ears. Somebody say inheritance. Mm, I like this. Now let us wrap it up so we can get, get the, the, the message. And he began to say unto them, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now watch this. Jesse came from a lineage that we can trace to Abraham. You know, Matthew put it to Abraham. Luke put it to Adam. There is... Because God gave his spoken word. And the word of God cannot be broken. So, David came from Jesse. Hallelujah. Everybody was in the battle against Goliath. But nobody could understand they had that inheritance. Except David. That is why David could declare. Because I don't have time. I won't read everything. But David could declare. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? To defy. The armies of God. That is one translation. Another translation will say Lord of hosts. Which simply translates in the Hebrew word Jehovah Sabaoth. That means God who commands both the heavens, the armies of the heavens and all the armies on earth. Because God can turn around the heart of the king. That is why Elisha could say they that are with us are greater. <clears throat> I wish I had a Holy Ghost church in here. Watch this. Watch this. So David understood the inheritance. He knew the power is not his. He knew something is in his lineage. He had been anointed. Somewhere came past seven sons who looked big and good looking and everything. And, and it was the shepherd's boy. Somebody say shepherd. That is the man he anointed because that's the man God wanted because God has seen the heart. The heart that was after God. David understood inheritance. Abraham had a covenant and God said your seed. Somebody say seed. Seed is you, son. Sonship, or when I say son, it connotes authority. 
It connotes inheritance. It connotes rights. I'm going to show you in the Bible so that I can, I can quickly close here. Galatians, please. Galatians chapter Galatians chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7 so that I can close. Galatians chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Watch this. And because ye are sons, God hath sent for the spirit of his son. Remember, just watch this. If you're using the King James, it says sons. It was small letter, capital letter with for the son, the spirit of the son. Jesus is the begotten, the only begotten. You are adopted. You see the difference now? But you are all sons. Watch this. Watch this. It says, the spirit of his son into your heart, crying what? Abba, Father. So, verse 7 says, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then, and heir of God, through Christ. Somebody say, I'm an heir. If you don't understand you are here, Satan is going to take you like a handkerchief, wipe his behind, throw it away. But when you understand I'm a heir of the kingdom, I have rights. When Satan shows up, you're going to say, hey, 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 this is not your place. I am a son of the living God. If I got some champions that are sons, you can stand on your feet, raise up your right hand and say, praise the Lord with me. Woo. Until you know you can't prevail. My people perish for lack of knowledge. You got to know who you are. That is why even if they malign you at the working place, you remember the scripture said, if they malign you, they malign God. God will begin to fight them. No, 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 no. Your fight is different. You don't go fighting flesh and blood. You don't go, no, you don't. People, you're wasting time. You can't take your children for ice cream. If you choose, you choose fights. The fight has to have a reward. The only difference is the motive. <laughs> Praise God. Because otherwise it could be covetousness. <laughs> you want to have somebody's wife, you want to have somebody's car, you want to use an iPhone because somebody's using it, and then you are broke. <laughs> that is not wisdom. Money is a function of wisdom, not necessarily miracles. It can, but it's first a function of wisdom. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. So you can't use an iPhone because somebody else is using it. You can, but you must not. You must not drive the car because somebody else is driving it. You must look what is priority. That is why I'm talking of motive because that's what God is judging. God is judging the hearts of men. Not necessarily because of what you did. Why did you do it? Because that's this, Jesus says, not what goes, come, goes, in, goes into a man that defies the man. It's what comes out of the man. You follow what I'm saying? David had the kind of heart God loved. So he saw there was a right motive. I will bring glory to the name of God. But in it, I'm going to have a reward. God is not against you having a reward. God wants you blessed. My God shall supply all my need. According, it is not about accumulation. It's about supply. God does not give you anything beyond what you, what he knows you can, you can, you can receive and it will not kill you. Watch this. What it means is that God only gives daily bread. <laughs> you didn't get that just yet. God only gives what? Daily bread. Some of you are killing yourself for something that God is saying is not yet time. It's not yet season. That is why you're already broke. Because you went ahead of God. But if you were waiting on God, daily bread would always come. Because God is a God of supply. Jesus said, do not worry what you eat. He's already there. What, one of the names of God is that God is there. God is not only a person. God is also a place where two or three of you are gathered in my name. I am there. And if God is there, there will be a supply. David understood that. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He's not one of us. He may be a giant. But I have one that is greater. Am I talking of sons again? Who said greater is he? Jesus said great. A son. The son of God. Now don't confuse it. He is the begotten, only begotten son of God. He is one with God because we were talking about Mejizedek in Genesis. So let nobody confuse you because theologians can say all kinds of things and confuse people. They say just like the five stones. <laughs> you know, it's okay. They say five is the number of grace. They say it's the five-fold ministry. They try to explain why did David have all these extra four stones. But you read the Bible, you find out that there was other people, another four that had the DNA of Goliath. They were giants. 
So David understood sonship. He saw ahead of time. I got to get prepared. Probably the other four would come. But I know God is going to cut the head of this man in front of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Who is going to say, I have an inheritance and I'm going to take hold of it. Because if you are not, <laughs> listen, the Bible says we are more than conquerors. I want to show you a scripture because of time. I need to close. I want to show you a scripture. This is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I want us to go to Romans because Romans is good. Romans is a very good book, powerful book. Hallelujah. The book of Romans. Let us go there. Chapter 8. Chapter 8 is so powerful. You need to know it. If possible, memorize it. Hallelujah. Because it's going to tell you who you really are. When you know who you are, even your speech will command attention. You didn't hear what I just said. I said, even your speech, we, the Bible says, let your words be seasoned with salt. Somebody say, I am the salt of the earth. Somebody say, I'm the light of the world. And some of you don't know it. You're just living like everybody else. You're living like your neighbor. The church has become like the word and the word like the church. No, I'm saying you're a son of inheritance. Listen, you're looking at me, I'm all Muslim, I'm all a man. I said you're a son of God. Amen. When the sons of God gather, God counts you. You are marked with the seal of the Holy Ghost. And because you are marked with the seal of the Holy Ghost, you can kill your giant. So when the trouble shows up, you say, I'm a son. I have Jesus living on the inside of me. Jesus understood he was a son. You know, he almost gave up because he wasn't, it was, you know, Jesus was both God and man. And if you deny he was man, he was man, then you deny that he's, you deny his deity. Because if you look at the book of John, he emphasized Jesus as God, both in the gospel and in, the, in his epistle. Very important that you understand that. This is the authority with which you win. You win in the name of Jesus. Why do you win in the name of Jesus? Because Jesus had conquered. He, was, he went to the Mount of Olives. He was praying. And he almost gave up. He said, Father, if it is possible, take Take this. This is hard. This is hard. Some men, somebody are hearing me right now. Father, this is hard. I'm hearing the preacher, but this is hard. Father, this is hard. Can I do this? I'm hearing this. Faith is coming, but can I do it? Just look unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Oh, Kababahando. Somebody feel the Holy Ghost right now. But Jesus, the Bible says, and he prayed more earnestly. An angel showed up. And when angel showed up, he went to the cross. Watch this. Are you with me? Watch this. The Bible says, because he went to the cross, God gave him a name. Yes. So until you conquer, there will be no name. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. David understood that. And he surpassed his bedroom. He surpassed his bedroom. I want to declare over someone, you will win today. Yes. You will surpass in the name of Jesus. Oh, just before we get into, an, <laughs> into the prophet, I just want us to read Romans chapter 8. There is something that is good here. Yeah, hallelujah. There is something that is good here. You need to see this. Let us look at chapter 8. I want to show you something. Oh, hallelujah. This is good. Mm. Praise God. This is because... Oh, I'm going to round up with the outline. But I need to get this. There's something in chapter 8. Mm. Let us look at verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, Oh, can we stand up on our feet and read this together? Some, some of y'all, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling good about this. Uh, some of us don't play church. This is a life. <laughs> uh, the Lord just said to my spirit, did you send greetings from your wife? You know, pastor was talking about it. I just got to tell you, my beautiful young wife, like he knows, <laughs> sends her greetings. And the church also in Guta's law. In fact, the brother that is preaching today, that's why I thank God for him. When God can grace give you men. That's not easy ministry. Oh, ministry is something else. But then you will know that you are sent because others went. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, when he sends his word, <laughs> it, it accomplishes what he sends it for. So my wife sends her greetings. And one of the brothers preaching today went to Nigeria, came back. I came home. My wife made food for me. I was like, what? This sounds so good. Where do you get this? This is the kind of dried, small fish rich men eat in Africa. Who? And the wife gave my wife a good measure Shaking together version of the running over variety. Fed good. And he's preaching today. 
what God can do. Mama knows where we began. The rebellions and everything. But she chose me as a prophet. And she's blessed. Her son is blessed. You didn't get that. Now let me say something before I read what I read and we pray. Pastor, I need to close. My time is up. I'm going to close now. Watch this. You don't follow the crowd. If David followed the crowd, he wouldn't make it. He understood he was a son of inheritance. There is something here. There is something here. What shall be done to the man? And they told him, who you mean he's going to marry the king's wife? That is a change of status. That is a change of level. Whew, royalty. Hallelujah. Another thing that was there was generational blessing. Because he will be exempted from the tax. Do you believe that it can happen? You will stop paying tax. If you believe, I want you to shout a big hallelujah. That God can raise up a man that will say, look, you are such a blessing to this nation. Stop paying tax. But you got to be exceptional for that to happen. David understood the difference. Hallelujah. So watch this. The man of God is talking. He is speaking the words of God. Don't follow the crowd. Somebody was saying, Pastor E. Adebuye said he stopped snow in America. And they're asking me and I'm looking at them and say, what are you asking me? You don't correct upwards. Even if there is a need to correct. But the man of God was right. Who, who told you that God can't stop the weather? What kind of believers? And these are so-called pseudo quasi new Christians going on. Everybody wants to preach. But what you don't know is that there is a different level to this thing. Hallelujah. My mom went to be with Jesus. She's not dead. She's alive. Sometimes I feel like her spirit is coming upon me. The kind of spirit that serves God. Gave up everything to serve the gospel. When she died, they were dra dragging the money they didn't know was available. I have not seen the righteous seed begging bread. You can't serve God and lose. She was being buried. They said, I look, the rain is going to fall. I came to that place by the Holy Ghost. I don't need to start. There's some, it's not that time you go and start to pray. You prepare. And I just waved it with the hand. They said the rain must fall. I said it's not going to fall. They said they need to make some juju. I said, what? Where I am? If you try, somebody's going to die. And I waved it with my hand. I don't need to pray in tongues. The Bible says Elijah was a man like, of like passion. And he commanded the rain to cease. And until he commanded it to come back before it came back. What kind of faith do we have today? So you are telling me a man of stature like Pastor Adobe can't stop snow? He did. So what is that? Somebody say inheritance. It is one of your inheritance to speak to the nations of the world. To speak to the elements. To command things to begin to work together for your good. It doesn't work together for good for everybody. But to those that love God and are called according to inheritance. Somebody shout! As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God is giving you direct access. Amen. Now, sisters, watch this. Jesus dealt more with women. He, re he fed more. Women were more <laughs> people who received faster than the men. That is why even a woman is whom he gave things. He couldn't give John, James, and Peter. But he was giving it to a woman. He had women who were giving their substance. Any woman that makes herself available, Hallelujah. the home will shine. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, because you're lifting the hand of the man. Amen. Now let me give you something because I want to close. I want to give you an outline. I will just read it through and then I will pray and bless you. If you're not saved, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now because this belongs, inheritance belongs to the saved. Yes. Now, I'm not looking at people playing church. <laughs> mm, you've not seen a fight. <laughs> I fought battles. <laughs> Pastor, you came to me to preach. That's when they caught the light. Anniversary. We were not even owing. That is when the star decided to come and cut light. 
And the man of God is coming to preach. Pranana is there, right? I said, what? Where is my testimony? Where is the... What? One brother in the church stood up and paid for a generator. You know how much that cost? Sometimes some of you forget what God can do. Mama is here. Some, a man of God walked into the church. Paid for six months the rent. You begin to see the hand of God. Oh God. I want somebody to begin to believe that if I am saved, everything I'm hearing is possible unto me. But not the way that, you know, I'm walking, 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 walking. Walking is not just kingdom. No, no, no. Don't miss it. You can walk all your life. I've seen people die at work. Just die. All the pension gone. It's over. State takes it. But when you are on a solid rock. <laughs> woo, you will become a partner in the name of Jesus. I want to give you an outline and I close. Inheritance starts with model. Jesus as your model. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 17. And what is that? One, Jesus is one with authority. Two, meekness. That will help you as a husband in the house. What does meekness mean? It means having authority without using it. For example, the book of Isaiah chapter 53 tells us the most about the sufferings of Christ. And one of it is in verse 7. He did not open his mouth. Women have mouth. If you don't do it by now, you're not fit to be a husband. But you don't open your mouth all the time. Meekness. Somebody say meekness. And then you dwell with her according to knowledge. Because Satan, the first enemy Satan has is the household. The family. They want to destroy. That's why you see all the gay rights. But God created the family unit as a unit of power. He said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, God perfected praise. Amen. Even the voice of God entering the womb of a woman can create life. Amen. Following what I'm saying? Somebody say, Jesus will be my model. Jesus. Number two, identity. You have to own your identity. Know your identity and own your identity. I don't have time to read the scriptures. Three, you have to know you are a warrior. You are a soldier of Christ. It's a battle. But you have the winning formula. The name Jesus. At the mention of the name Jesus. Not for everybody. Paul I know. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Did you see that now? <laughs> Alright. For shepherd. You have no authority. If you can be a shepherd. Sheep follows shepherd. And if you're not a shepherd. You will have goats. Stubborn and not following leadership. Jesus is everything. So you have to be born again. And then three rules for a man in the house. Pastor said one already. I, I stood up. Priesthood. You're the priest in the house. Two, you are a protector. Women need a protector. Don't let them deceive you with any macho you see. They love to be protected because the Bible said they are the weaker vessel. That is why if you tell your wife she's beautiful, watch her bounce. Hallelujah. Even heaven is pleased when you do that. God opens heaven. Do you know that? You got to treasure her. Three is provision. You have to provide. And God any man who puts his hand, God will bless him. Amen. But you got to be born again, so I need to close. God deals with you this way, I just mentioned. It's not the same with nationhood. In nationhood, you have the priest, the prophet, and the king. So don't stay around and say, why is Pastor Kole not praying for, for the right kings to be in power? That's your duty. The righteous rule, the people rejoice. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? You have to understand the Bible. Don't conflict everything and get confused. Priest, prophet, kingship. Okay? The king has his role. If you put in an evil king like they do in Africa, you're not going anywhere. All right? But the prophet, you have to listen to the man of God. Don't follow the crowd. I'm saying it again. If he's telling you something, you don't listen. You become insubordinate. You have allowed Satan to come in. Anywhere there is strife, you find every evil work. That's the devil. Somebody hearing me now? 
All right. I want our eyes closed. I want our eyes closed. I want to hear some sound. I just, I just, I, something is going to happen. Two things. The first one is going to happen now shortly. In two, three minutes, I'm done. Man of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Miracles are going to happen. Miracles are going to happen. Miracles are going to happen. Hallelujah. Somebody came to the church and told me, Pastor, they're fighting me so bad. And I saw it. Everything he does doesn't work. Everything he does doesn't work. But he chose me as his prophet. Today he's blessed. I mean, if you see him now, he's twice his size. Praise God. That's what God can do. Amen. I wonder why it's closed. I want to hear some sound. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and thou, thou beats me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I call. I come, just one more time, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and thou, thou beats me come to thee, O Lord. Eyes closed, all eyes closed, all eyes closed. A declaration is going to take place in two, three minutes. If you are not saved, and I don't want any movement right now, because salvation is the greater, every other thing is the lesser. I want you to raise up your right hand. You say, Father, today is my day. Now run to the front because you got to make a public declaration. Satan has to see it. Run to the front quickly. I don't have time. One. Two, if you're raising up your hand, come to the front. All eyes closed. If you're raising up your hand, I saw hands raised. You can't put it down. You raised up your hand. God is a witness. Come to the front quickly. Quickly. I'm going to count to 10. Be here because it's an eternal decision. And you watch what is going to happen from today. One. Two. Don't wrestle with God. No, you're not Jacob. <laughs> Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Now it's going to remain two now. Say, Lord, today is my day. I'm giving myself to Jesus. I'm giving myself to Jesus. Oh, I'm giving myself to Him. I'm giving myself to Him. Nine. Amen. That's good. Ten. I see you love that song. We're going to sing it before when I'm giving the altar. Amen. I got to go. Pastor, we are out of time. We have to keep protocols for two, three minutes. Please, this is the most important part of life. All eyes closed. All eyes closed there. Those of you that are out there, just say after me quickly, Lord Jesus. I want to hear your voice. Say it with your mouth. The Bible says with your mouth you make confession and with the heart you believe. So say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you came to the earth. I believe you came to the earth. And that you died. And that you died. And that you rose again from the dead. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Oh, my sins. Oh, my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. I surrender to your authority. I surrender to your authority. Give me the grace to follow you. Give me the grace to follow you. And to serve you faithfully. And to serve you faithfully. Write my name in the book of life. Name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. I am washed. I am washed. I am clean. I am clean. And I am saved. And I am saved. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I mark them with the seal of the Spirit of God. Amen. From today, you are a candidate of heaven. Amen. You are a kingdom agent. Amen. And you are a kingdom son and daughter. Amen. 
in Jesus name Amen. God bless you may go now Amen. give them a clap of hallelujah please wait 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 if you don't belong to this church is there a pastor around you? any pastor around you please follow him quickly I'm going to write your name and your number except but if you're if you're not a member of this church make sure you write your name and your number down hallelujah God bless you please note them note them very important God will make anybody who is not a part of this church uncomfortable everywhere else. You come and worship with Pastor Kone. Now, I want to bless you. I want to prophesy over your life. But in 30 seconds, I want to first of all declare, Father, I will take hold of my inheritance. Please go ahead and declare in 30 seconds. I got to go right now. I'm out of time. See, I take hold of my inheritance in Jesus' name. I take hold of my inheritance in Jesus' name. Father, I take hold in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to lift up your right hands. Father, you sent me here. And you sent me with a blessing. I declare that everyone under the sound of my voice will enter into their destiny. Yes, Lord. Beginning today. Amen. Beginning now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for supernatural ideas. Amen. I pray for an understanding like never before. Yes. I pray for the spirit that Lord will take them to excellence. Yes. The David kind of spirit. Yes, Lord. The spirit of Jesus enter you. Take you to places you never dreamt of. According to Ephesians 3.20. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed of the Lord. Thank you. Holy Somebody Jesus. shout hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, give those hands to Jesus. Give those hands to Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Shalom and Maranatha, God Let's bless. Let's make it bigger. Glory to God. Is somebody moving? Are you moving? Thank you, Lord. Ah, son of inheritance. I see home remedies. I see homes being saved. Homes being delivered. I see men surprised at the changes in their homes. It is done in the name of Jesus. Let us put our hands together for God's servant. Put your hands together for Pastor Joshua. Glory to God in the highest heaven. On a men's day like this, there is no crime to add 30 minutes to the service. So take your seats in the name of Jesus. Let's call our men, please, for our next program. I expect them to be even around already. Praise the Lord. Encourage them as they come in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. If you were blessed by that message, put your hands together for the man of God. Because of time, we are going to limit our programs. Uh, but next on the list is couple games. I'm going to call for all men here with their wives to step forward for a few questions. We want to know if you know your spouse. Uh, I'll start with our main leader, Brother Syriac. Put your hands as I call them, please. Brother Syriac and the wife, please step forward. Brother Roland, please, and his beautiful wife, please step forward. 